So Robert, we're so excited to you know talk to you. I haven't really seen you or talked to you since your Atlantic City days. You're going to be doing a live demonstration, a cooking demonstration at Live Casino in Philadelphia. So can you talk to us about that and what fans can expect if they attend? Well, it's kind of funny because we do a live show, which is about a 90 minute show, literally around the world, Japan, Afghanistan, Iraq, Poland, Spain. And um, we're doing this demo at, at the Live Casino on the 18th. And it's really um, an audience driven thing because yes, I'll be showing them the food they're eating and demo wise, but we go a little crazy and my team, um, you know, it's almost Christmas. So it's a great Christmas gift to, to bring somebody there. But the coolest thing is I never know what they're going to do with me or do for me. So there's a lot of craziness. Yes, I'll be giving you a great meal, but um, there's a lot of education on it um, in a very funny way. Uh, meaning let's, what? Meaning, um, we use salt and pepper and oil and vinegars, and I talk to you about them. Hang on, my wife is crazy here. Okay. <laughs> um, we just so we we talk about the use of them, um, but I show you the use of them and education in a very strange way. There's a little dress up. There's a bit of acting. There's a little role play. Oh. All of those things with salt, sugar, uh, pepper, corns, um, uh, and then a lot of other things. Okay. And I'm, I'm trying to be cryptic because I don't want to give the give stuff away. away. I got gotcha. you. Um, but I use the audience uh, an awful lot in that, in those skits and those plays. So is there a little dress up? Maybe. Is there a little fun? A lot. Okay. <laughs> That's good. I mean, it sounds like a lot of fun. I mean, they're going to get a three course meal and the live demonstration and there'll be a role play. So I mean, you can't go wrong. What else is there? <laughs> what else is there? It's a lot of fun. That's cool. Well, tell us about what projects you're working on right now. So we're in the middle of uh, it's so funny because I've just finished um, a new show that will air in, in March of next year with John Tapper. Ooh, um, cool. Yes, two, two, like, yeah, two, two very eight, eight personalities. Uh, type A personalities. Uh, Restaurant Impossible, we are closing up. We've got another couple of shows before Christmas. Uh, Dinner Impossible, we've just finished for new season. So hopefully uh, you'll see that soon. A new show we've been airing now on Cooking Channel called Cheat Day USA. Ooh, okay. Where What's I get a about? day off and I get to, to run around and, and eat lots of, of crazy things. Um, obviously, our company, our, our Fit Crunch is going great. Our, uh, our liquor, uh, we just uh, took national. So um, our foundation is doing amazing work. Uh, we just fed yesterday 700 Marines in, in Camp Pendleton. And I literally just came back from Hawaii. Uh, I took uh, a couple of hundred folks, but really 63 uh, World War II veterans back to Pearl Harbor with six of the original folks that were there in 1941 back uh, to, to Pearl Harbor for remembrance and uh average age 97 to 103 yeah um wow. and then it came back finished the show so uh it's been really really good uh thanksgiving fort bragg with the president of the united states and first lady taking care of our troops you know troops to me and our first responders uh, through our foundation the robert irvine foundation is my is my passion you know food is a vehicle that moves me for my passion um so there's a lot of things going on 2022 is already busy um, fully scheduled so um, yeah we you know the more we can give back the more fun we can have and the more we can highlight the charities that we believe in our firefighters our first responders doctors nurses teachers uh, our, our military of course uh, yeah. that's what we're here for yeah I know and my grandfather he just passed away last year at 95 but he was a very big proponent for VJ Day. He And he didn't have a computer, so he would write to the president. He wrote to the Congress. I just came across all the letters. He was a big advocate for that and also the American flag. And he went to the schools and taught kids about the importance and how to respect the American flag. And I just came across some letters that the kids wrote to him about what they learned. And, you know, it's important because people don't realize what it's about and what the true meaning yeah. is. So that's great that you do that. I, I, you should you should get on board with the uh, Congressional Medal of Honor Foundation. They do such an amazing um program with children and teaching about you know uh service and, and um 
over self and all those kind of it's just amazing to to listen and when i was on the plane and it's kind of funny because we did a dinner the night before in dallas fort worth and i was the hostess for the most as i was the flight attendant okay <laughs> I can see oh that my now. goodness <laughs> uh, I, 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 and my hats off to all the flight attendants out there especially all the american team who volunteered american airlines is such a great job for our, our veterans but i was the guy you know can i get you some coffee a tea sir can, and the stories uh, just unbelievable. Um, and, and, you know, I'm humbled to live in a country that, that we can call free, right? Yeah. Because of these men and women that have worn the cleft on our nation and still wear and, and will wear. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. That's awesome. Well, good. Well, thank you for all you do with that. It's definitely appreciated. And I will look into that. The Congressional Medal of Honor Foundation. Yes. What do you like to make for the holidays? What's your family favorite? Well, it's funny. This is the first time in probably 10 years that I'm actually going to be home. Normally, um, Christmas, we go away um, and it used to be Afghanistan, Iraq, uh, with the chairman or the vice chairman of Joint Chiefs. And we would actually cook for the troops deployed. Uh, this is the first time I'll be home with my wife, uh, Gail. And, and it's so funny because we, we built this house, we bought this house and, and put in a beautiful kitchen and Gail does most of the cooking. Okay. Um, so yes, I'm, I, I'm a big believer in Christmas. I don't put up trees and I don't do presents. I don't do those kind of things. It's not my Christmas. My Christmas is with my family. Um, so we'll probably do uh, roast turkey, mashed potatoes, turnips, uh, carrots, um, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, ham, roast potatoes, mashed potatoes, wow. um, and here's one for you, and take this the right way. We have a suet pudding called spotted dick and custard. <laughs> okay. Right? It's an English thing. That's an English um, thing, I know, yeah. Uh, I love that. So I, anything sweet, I'm a big believer in, you know. Um, <laughs> but that's kind of my Christmas dinner. How do you make your Brussels sprouts? Do you have any special? Uh, deep fry them first and roast them in the oven with onions, bacon, and balsamic. Mm, that sounds very good. Oh, you know, yeah. People put cinnamon on their Brussels sprouts. I've done that too. Oh, <laughs> no. It's actually pretty That's cool. the worst. Really? <laughs> oh, I hate cinnamon. So, in, in, and this is kind of, you know, when you're, you want to know anything about Robert Irvine, two things he hates are red peppers and, and cinnamon. Okay. Because, okay. because the biggest cinnamon we use in the United States is cassia. Right, so it's very, it's very not that good. And and I actually did a, a show a couple of years ago called Kitchen Expedition, where I got to go to Sri Lanka and actually try real um, cinnamon. I, I harvested the cinnamon on an island with three generations of families living in a little hut. It was unbelievable. So now the only cinnamon I can eat is okay. Sri Lankan cinnamon. Okay, well, I mean, maybe we can specialty get it here somewhere. So you can, you get it in every store. It, oh, okay. it's, it's a little bit more expensive, but it's way better. Okay, well, I'm glad you said that because I will now personally look for that, which is cool. <laughs> there you go, I've done my job. You've done, yes, you have, and that's pretty cool. You said some good things. But uh, back to the John Taffer thing, like, what was it like working with him? It was great. John and I have been friends for many years, but we were very different. Okay. Yeah, very different. First of all, he's a little taller than me. Um, I'm a little bit more muscular than he is. Um, but we have so much respect for each other. You know, um, it, it's a tough business. The restaurant and hospitality business is tough. You know, I do restaurants, he does bars. You know, uh, I don't get in his world, although he gets a little bit in mine because he does food in bars. Uh, but it was, it was a great experience. Um, and, and people have asked for it for years and years and years, but we, we live on two different networks with two different contracts. So right. uh, when it comes out in March, it'll be on Discovery Plus, which will be great um, streaming. And we'll see where it goes. OK. And speaking of networks like the Food Network, I know they just renewed some other chefs with like Bobby Flay, Giada. Like what's your you know take on that on their shows? Well, I just love Here's what I love about Food Network. Um, we're a family. You know, I started back 13, 14 years ago. Um, Bobby, I love the guy. He's an amazing chef. He really is. Guy, um, Giada is the sweetest human being on the planet. I, I, we just like a family. Listen, uh, families fall out. <laughs> okay. And you all get back together again. And and the, the folks out there think that we work together all the time. We probably see each other twice a year at food and wine festivals. That's it because our shows, mine takes me around the country. Um, 
Bobby does one in Italy with Giada, and then, then he has one in New York City. And then, you know, so we don't really see him that much. But when we get together in South Beach uh, Wine and Food Festival, or New York City uh, Wine and Food Festival, it's great to see the, the family back together again. Mm -hmm. So I'm all for diversity and the best, the best shows on television, and, and Food Network does that. They've been doing it for so long. I know so many great people from there. And one thing a chef had told me about you was that you had put uh, you take pictures of the plates and you would put them up. And so people would then make the plates the same way and there'd be no mistakes. Can you just talk to us? Do you think that that's a good? Thing yeah, well, you know, it goes back to to it's so funny because I just finished uh, a, a restaurant impossible yesterday. And it's so funny because people don't believe in and when you, you get a recipe, they give you an ingredient list, not a method. So I make sure that everybody has a recipe or the ingredient list, the method, a plating card, how it gets sit on the, on the plate, and a picture. Because um, if somebody calls out sick, mm -hmm. at least they can follow the recipe, they know what it looks like, and they know how to cook it. You know, And I've, I've done that for years. I did it at Caesars, I did it at Resorts, I, I did it at Taj Mahal. Yeah. Uh, it takes a lot of work, but we also do that now on the road when, we, when we're uh, when we're cooking at food and wine vessels like I am today. Because um, I want, I think food and wine has become such a a common thing, right? Yes, we've always eaten to live, but now we, we live to eat, and, and vice versa. Um, wines used to be in the red wine glass, the white wine glass, and the you know all these champagne glasses. Now it's ambidextrous. Everything goes in everything, right? And I think wine has become just like beer has become more approachable and and there's no right or wrong it's whatever you like and that's what i love about our business mm -hmm. it's fun it brings people together it gives hope it gives resolution in some cases mm -hmm. um but it's just a great way food is a great common denominator yeah no, it definitely is. It's great. And I love your passion for it. You can clearly see it, you know, through the screen and also in person too. I've met you multiple times and you always have a great personality. So we love that. And um, just to end the interview, let's talk about your favorite things to do in Atlantic City. And we'll also do the same in Philly and maybe we'll get some shout outs for some people in AC. Well, I, I, I love, so I spent uh, eight years in Atlantic City um, at, at uh, Trump and at Caesars and a little bit with resorts. So a little over eight years. Um, I loved, and, and I don't know if it's still there or not, I think it's closed or changed hands, Atlantic City Bar and Grill. I used to go there all the time. Still there, yeah. It's still there. I just don't know who owns it now, but I used to go there all the time after work, take my whole crew and, and, and eat the crab legs. Um, what's the the, um, the sandwich place? Uh, White, Ca White Castle? No. White House Subs. White House oh. Subs. I forgot the name of it. White House Subs I love. Um, and then Justin, come over here, come over here. Because <laughs> I bust his chops all the time on this because we, we end up always going to Chevola's, Chef Ola's, okay. right? Because that's a great place. That's the place yeah. um, we love them, right? Yes. Sir. Um, what else do we do when we're in Atlantic like City? Got it. Hit up Dino's, Dino's. Chef Ola. Yeah. 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 Gotta go yeah. Got more, right? Did yeah. you get the tuna sub? What do you get? Oh, yeah. Tuna <laughs> yeah. 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 chips, American. It, it's, it's just, I, I really I have a special. And I mean this, this is not for television, not for anything. I just love Atlantic City. I, I, I put my culinary chops there, you know, uh, when I came from Jamaica. So I, Atlantic City will always have a special piece of me because uh, I love going back and I love the food and wine festivals um, that used to go there. Um, so, um, and in Philly, oh my goodness, <laughs> Philly. It's going to be, oh, what do you like in Yeah, what do I like in Philly? I love, I mean, <laughs> I there's what, nothing not to like in Philly. Right, right. I, I have a great friend, uh, Glenn Bennett, who we hang out with. We end up going to um, Capitol Grill, to Del Frisco's, to uh, um, Park. Park. Mm -hmm. uh, we do a lot. Um, what else? Uh, my goodness. We, I mean, we really hit Philly Art. Yes. Yeah. So, and the <laughs> cheesesteaks. We love cheesesteaks. Okay. Pork, pork and beef. A little broccoli wrap. <laughs> That's it. Now, That's all now, 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 I'm more, now I'm more hungry. I was just going to say, I'm really hungry now. Well, I'm even more hungrier to get to this event that you're doing next week at Live. And I think it's going to be really fun with three courses and a demonstration and role play. It, it, I, I feel it's a great Christmas gift. And, and people, if you want to have some fun, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to turn it up a little bit. It's going to be, 
it's kind of my last thing. I've got I've got one bottle signing in New Hampshire after this, and then it's Christmas. So for me, it's this all about it. F U N. <laughs> yes, but why not? Fun, I love it. Food and alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> Let's all party with Robert Irvine for the holidays. I love it. <laughs>